Fashion. Huss. Elam Road. Huss. Shout out to my Huss. boy E. Keep it going. Huss. This for you, boy. Huss. Boy, I got a unique Huss. I had to get it out the mud. I Huss. I ain't waiting on shit. I Huss. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the official Miss Jamaica. You already know. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> check it, man. Say, man, hey, today is a wonderful day, man. We got a guy in here, man. He really don't need no introduction, man. He done, he done, he done pretty much did what I be trying to do. This guy has interviewed Megan Thee Stallion. This guy has interviewed Jay Prince. This guy has interviewed, um, hey, man, anybody. It, what's that say, cheese boy name? Uh, uh, Sean Cotton. Sean Cotton. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This boy done interviewed everybody that you think to interview, man. Hey, man, Jeff Pullen, what's going on, baby? Take over soldier. Take over soldier, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Take over TV you. is here, man. Yeah. So, so let me ask you a question, man. How, how did you get into this? I fell into it. This wasn't even planned, to tell the truth. Really? Yeah. Yeah, me and my homeboy, uh, BJ, we used to have, like, conversations. Pull up to like, the mic a little bit. Okay, let me yeah, just, just a little, little bit. bit. Yeah, there you go. You now good? I can hear you. All right. Yeah, I want to be able to hear it in that, in that in, just yeah. speaking to the mic. Yeah, yeah. So we used to have conversations late at night to about 4 or 5 in the morning about sports, politics, anything that was worth talking about. And then he was like, man, let, let's start a podcast. I said, okay. What so, year was this? This was like late 2016. Okay. The podcast was called The Vent. The Vent. The Vent. Where you just get just vent, you know what I'm saying? And we did like two shows. And he started schooling. That was the end of it, right? By that time, I had caught the bug. I'm like, man, I kind of like this. So <laughs> <laughs> It's cool, so, right? So, you know, I was just, one day I was riding home from work, and I was thinking like, man, I want to start my own, but I want this to be kind of like a, a family business, too. Because my family's not known for having businesses. They just know, you know, just blue collar workers. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I want to start that that trend, you know, start to turn around the generational curse of, you know, generational poverty, stuff like that. But, yeah. an, but anyway, uh, I was like, okay, now if I start one, well, I'm going to call it, right? And I was listening to satellite radio, and you know how the DJ will play, like, the original song, then play the sample? Yeah, or, yeah, you yeah. Know, the, so they was playing, like, The Doors 5 to 1. And the sample of that is the takeover from Jay Z, right? Yeah, 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 and, you know, yeah. I'm a big fan of classic rock and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the guitars got the blare, and I like that's it. It's a ready made theme song. The takeover, takeover sounds it's aggressive. TV. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's aggressive. So yeah. I'm like, that's it. No, it was called the Takeover Podcast Show. Takeover man. Podcast. That's what it was originally okay. called. Okay. Cause we just doing an audio podcast. Okay. So I called my cousin and my brother. I'm like, hey man, y'all wanna do this? They was like, Cool. If you wanna do it, we'll support you. And so that's how we started the Takeover Podcast. Show. Takeover Podcast Show. Yes, so sir. was you guys? Uh, what was you guys broadcast on Shreveport or was I, it in Longview? Or because no. you from Longview? Yeah. Okay. Nine hundred three all the way Lobos. What's happening? Them Lobos. You serious about them Lobos? Got to. One year y'all was fighting uh, Marsha. I'll never forget it. You it was, was at 20, 20, 2012, 12, Yeah, twenty twelve, twenty thirteen. You, you know, know we, don't you? You know we don't like Marsha. Well, you know, you know wait, a like minute, wait a minute, man. You can't talk like that on this podcast. <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. I wouldn't be for Longview if I wasn't aggressive you, like that. That's right. Marshall. That's right. Well, you know, you know? <laughs> it's a lot more to Mar uh, Longview and Marshall than people realize. It is. It you is. know, I used to run around with them Davenport boys back in the day. Oh. Well, it get bad okay. here in a minute. Don't, don't play, nigga. I'll throw a name. I'll drop a name on you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. so, so. When you got into podcasting, did you ever think that you would be uh, uh, interviewing the people and the likes of Lil Flip and all the people that you've had to, you, it, the the chance to interview? Because you interviewed, because I, I want to get into that, man. Yeah. I seen I seen how you do yours. You do a part one part, and I do it somewhat like that as well mm -hmm. too. I'll send out skits and then I'll come with the whole interview. But you do part one, part two uh, with, with Sean Cotton. You did that, yeah. And and, and so. How 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 is you and Sean Cotton link and and Sean Cotton is the one from Say Cheese TV, right? Uh, how how did how how did you guys come to know each other? Because it seemed like he felt pretty comfortable in that interview. Well, um, Big D from Mogul Media, okay, they, heard they him. real good friends, right? Okay. So, uh, one day I reached out to Big D. This this before I even knew that he knew Sean Cotton. Yeah. And I was like, man, I like what you're doing. I like your platform and all that. He's like, man, appreciate it. I said, look, when I come up there and be on your platform, you come be on my platform. And so we just, you know, interchange like that. And then come to find out, he's like real tight with Sean Cotton. So I just asked him, hey, you think you can plug me in for an interview with Sean Cotton? 
He's like, yeah, let me holler at him. Next thing you know, he's like, man, come up here. I forgot the date. Uh, you know, um, come but up but here. he made it happen. Yeah, hey, come up here on this like July fifth or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He made it happen. It yeah, he made it happen. So. And you pulled up on him. I pulled up on him. I came up here to Dallas right off um thirty five. They yeah. had a building up there. And I pulled up on him. And, we got, got the interview. In. We got That's in. crazy, man, because yeah. when I seen that, I said he seemed like he was pretty. That was a pretty good interview and seemed like he was pretty comfortable, you know, giving you the information that he gave you. So I like that interview. Right, because when you first meet people, you know, you got I, – I like to be professional. Yeah. Until, you know, all those walls are broken down and all that, right? So I, I let him know I wasn't on no bull. I didn't come in there smelling like a ton of weed. And yeah. Like they was about business. Yeah. I introduced myself and let them know what I was trying to do and – yeah, yeah, I like that. I mean, right. I, I, that's all you get in here, professionalism. You know, right. Boss Talk 101, that's what we, hey, man, it's a thing called integrity, man. Exactly. And, and we stand on that. You know what I'm saying? If you if, When you came in, you see the feel of what we do over here. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And, it, and and I'm pretty sure you've seen it before you came on the platform. You know, when we done this, it was for us to make sure that people could get their story out there, you know, in a way to where it could help some other people. That's what it was for about to us you know mm -hmm. and 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 i think we've been doing a good job at it and i appreciate you for coming on the show um megan the stallion that would look like a young megan the stallion video. it was it was at the very beginning she had just started it was at the very beginning how did you make that happen through t nitty t nitty t nitty okay he plugged that in i got plugged in through t nitty I was doing an interview with an artist named KP from Shreveport. Okay. And I was talking about, man, I want to I want to interview OG Run C one day. Okay, he okay, said, OG Run he C. He said, you know what? Billy Broadway knows OG Run C's manager. Okay. So call Billy. I called Billy Broadway. He said, okay, let me call T Nitty. Yeah. So then T Nitty got in touch with me like, you want to interview the OG, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but you got it. Yeah, I said, I said, yeah, yeah, I want to interview him. Like, man, he's one of my favorites. You know, all the Swisher House and Fuck Action CDs and all mm -hmm. that. Like, I got all that stuff. He said, okay, man, just come up, pull up on us in Houston. We make it happen. Wow. I said, bet. So we did the interview. About three weeks later, he said, hey, man, I need a favor from you. I'm going to send you a song and tell me if you like it. It's my okay. new artist. Okay. I'm like, okay, who is that? He said, Megan Thee Stallion. Mm. Nobody knew who she really was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, at that she, time, nobody knew. She was she... doing her thing, but she was real underground at the time, right? Because so I know there was no any visuals with that. No, no it visuals. Wasn't. We was do, we was podcasting it. Yeah, we weren't doing visuals yet. Okay. So he sent me the song. I mean, it was a cool song. You could tell she was just starting, and then, but like a week later, he's like, "Can y'all come up here and do an interview with her?" I'm like, "Okay, you know, we do owe you that. You plug the scene with OG Run C, so." We come in, came up there, did the interview. She, you could tell she was still at the beginning because her mom was still alive then, right? Yeah, yeah. So she kind of answered a question, kind of look over at her mom, like, kind of, did I answer that right? Or, yeah, 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 or, yeah. Or, or whatever. But you knew she had something. You knew you she was special? You knew she had something because she had the look. She was tall. She was a little slimmer back then. She yeah. She was as thick as she is right now. Yeah, I see it on the picture right, on the right, cover right, sheet. Right, right, So you knew she was going to be somebody, but... If I would have told you that I thought she's gonna be a three time Grammy winning artist, I'd be lying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, you I didn't, didn't know that. that. I didn't you didn't know that. that. I figured she'd be like regional, like yeah. kind of big regional, but I, I didn't see like one of the biggest artists in the world. Crazy. Right. Crazy. Right. The thing I, I look at, man, is is you don't know. You don't know you what don't these know. people are gonna be. I've been interviewing the hell out of everybody. Three to five interviews on Saturday, mm -hmm. three interviews on uh Monday, two interviews on, and you don't know what the hell these people going to turn into. You just in here talking to them and they got aspirations and dreams. And that's what I like. I like that. But I also like the fact that I'm able to, you know, tell them about, you know, about things that, 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 that older people might have experienced. And then they listen to you, but then they give you their gift. You know, basically this is who we are. And not only that, sorry, but um, when you bring them on here, is because we saw something in them. Right. You know exactly. what I mean? It's not just any and everybody can come on. We have to see the potential in you as being an artist or yeah. as being having a good backstory. Exactly. And the thing with Megan is like after the interview, you know, we played for the valet parking and all that, and we was waiting on the car. We was having a conversation. She's like, man, you guys are pretty cool. I'm going to follow y'all on Instagram. <laughs> and, and she was like, man, I hope one day that, you know, I make it in the industry and, 
and be a great rapper and stuff. I'm like, man, you know, keep working. And you, <laughs> and you, you do this, right? <laughs> like, you, keep on working at just, it. Just keep you'll working be, at yeah, it. You, yeah, you'll be all right. Just, just chill. <laughs> like, like, you, you really grew right, with me right, a little right, bit. Right, right. You know, Hold up. My partner, I was locked up with a dude. He told me, he said, man, <laughs> I was going around uh uh Man, I said, yeah, man. I said, yeah. You said, you heard of Destiny Child? He said, he used to chase me around the Astro World, nigga. I said, what? <laughs> yeah, Beyonce and them, yeah. They used to chase, this when they heard first started. I said, really? Yeah. <laughs> now you look at that story like, damn, <laughs> they used to chase you, nigga? Right. And, and, and it, you don't know. You never you know. You don't know what the hell you're dealing with. You, you don't know. know. And I like that. I like that part of it, actually. So, um, Jay Prince, you look like you just run up on him somewhere. No, I didn't. Look like you run up on the man. I don't know how you run up on Jay Prince. You know, no, no. when I, I started not to interview you, I said, hell, that nigga might be looking for him. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Because it seemed like you just run up on him like, hey, man. Uh, 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 I'm like, damn, he got the interview with Jay Prince. That's the one I need. It didn't happen like that. How did it happen? Talk to him. One night I was kind of just, I don't know what I was frustrated about. I was just mad, right? And he came across my timeline. And I was like, man, I'm finna email these people and I'm finna ask for an interview. Fuck it. Right. So I sent the email, I dressed it up, you know, gave my references and all that and sent it. I, I didn't expect to hear nothing from it. I'm telling you, 45 minutes later, his publicist emailed me. Be here. I remember the date. December 3rd at 8 o'clock at this address at the Barnes & Noble. I'm like, what? Dang. How much notice did you get? They gave me about three weeks. That's oh, cool. Okay, okay. It, it wasn't last minute. They gave me about three weeks. Okay. And, and my stupid ass emailed back, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> you, you sure you sure? <laughs> <laughs> you like, this hell done scared me. I done run up on something a little bigger than what I thought. Yeah, I'm like, who, me? You sure? <laughs> <laughs> what, she, but she they like, say, yeah. She's like, yes, yes. You, you request an interview, right? Like, yeah, I did. <laughs> I was at three weeks, you know, you're like, what am I asking this nigga? I done got it I'm now. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> Not expecting this to happen. That's the way I love to see it happen because it's real. Man, it's crazy how that whole thing. How long did it last? Because I, 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 I ain't going to lie to you. I didn't watch the whole thing. But how long did you, you how, how, how was the process? The process, till we got to Houston, was great. Till we got there. We got to the Barnes and Noble. He was doing the book signing. Mm -hmm. So we got the light. We getting the lights. We getting the cameras ready. I mean, we finna make this a big deal. Dude for Barnes and Noble, like, it's some kind of law or some kind of rule of law or something where you can't interview him inside the store. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yep. I'm like, son of a bitch. I'm like, damn. And it was cold. It's December. Mm -hmm. It's cold outside. The only thing that was outside was a little raggedy table, three little chairs. There was no lights. And it's cold. So we told his people, like, they said we got to do the interview outside and all this. They was ready to go watch the fight. This is the fight where they fought um, Tyson Fury mm -hmm. and Dante Wilder the first time. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, this is going to be limited, right? So they saw it wasn't a light, so they pulled all the Rolls Royces and Bentleys to the table to shine lights on the table oh, so wow. we can have lights. At least they were working with you. They was working with me. Now, what you didn't see in the interview was like the 13 or 14 people who were surrounding the table on the outside. <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah, you, I'm like, shit. Oh, you nervous. So, but the time oh, you were nervous. nervous. Yeah, you know you what it, it is. If you had it inside Barnes & Nobles, it's like people would have recognized the store and they don't want to be affiliated with any other interview. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. right. yeah. You, didn't, you, got, you got them questions prepped, didn't you? You prepped them questions, I right? I had them prepped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how yeah. cold you said it was? Oh, it was at least a good 35 that night. Okay, y'all, man, y'all can handle it. <laughs> it's bad enough, it's cold, but I'm interviewing Jay Prince. This is yeah, like yeah, nobody. Yeah, prepping them questions so, to make sure they right. All the questions I had, the timeline I had, get thrown out the window because now we ain't got but like 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. now you got to you gotta go on the fly. You just got to kind of just randomly ask. And I had my homeboy with me, so I was kind of bouncing off of him. When he asked questions, I'm like, good, let me think of something. Uh, this, this. So we made it work. It wasn't my best interview. It wasn't what I wanted. Yeah, yeah. But... As far as credibility, I got that part of it. Like, nobody can say that I didn't interview Jay Prince, and right. I did. So that's part of the resume. So when people ask me Don't what you've done, Go ahead. that's part of it. Don't you hate, like, on an interview like that, and you ask whatever's on the top of your head, but at the end, when you're done, you're like, dang, I should have asked this. I should have asked it. Like, all of the other questions start flowing to your head. 
of what you should have asked on right, the fly. Right, right. And, but how do you feel about that? I don't worry about it. It is what it is. The work is done. Yeah. True. You know, I think like, damn, I should ask that. But I, I won't linger on it. You can't. Because the work is done. You yeah. can't. Right. And if you get a part two, just ask it next time. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. But you just make the best out of it. I think I think you I think you hit it on the nail. You just got to make sure that you, you know, once, you know, it's old, old fortune uh, gum uh, rap I used to read say, <laughs> you know, ain't no sense in crying over spilled milk. Your cat will lick it up. Meaning yeah. don't worry about it. Ain't nothing you can do about it. You got to move on. So, um, <clears throat> look, Flip. What? What? I, I got to get the old little Flip. You know, he got a podcast now. Yeah, he do. Yeah, but I want to. I want to see how that. How did that interview get, uh, get? How did you end up interviewing little Flip? My partner Ricky Lat, uh, a good artist out of Shreveport. Make sure you check him out. He's dope. Ricky yeah. Lat. Shout out to Ricky Lat. What up, baby? He's like the Curtis Mayfield of hip hop. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying yeah. He got some real nice sounds. So check him out when you get a chance. He knew his business manager. Okay. It, it's, I can't remember the female's name. She's going to kill me. But anyway, he knew her. They, was, they grew up together. And so he hit her up. She's like, yeah, I set it up. He's going to be in Shreveport this day. Just pull up on him. It'll be straight. So we pulled up at the club he was going to be at. He was late for his performance. But the club was about to close. So he was really pissed at him, right? I'm like, damn, this ain't going to be good. He's like, no, no, we're doing the interview. They be all right. Like, okay. Damn. So we did it in his Rolls Royce. Yeah, he got the Rolls. Yeah, yeah. So I sat in there. I'm all. Man, no game. I'm man. all looking at the stars and all this stuff. You can't I, just slide, slide by the Rolls Royce statement. No. Man. Niggas in Texas getting money. Don't y'all never think down south. We See, we ain't got to worry about them potholes, none of that stuff. You ain't going to bring your rims up. We got good highways, a lot of road in front of you. Down here in Louisiana, Texas, and Mississippi, I'll let your boy. We out here. Yeah, tell him again. So who is Louisiana, the Texas, who- I'll <laughs> Who is the biggest um, interview you, for you that you've ever had? The biggest? The biggest and, and the best. Or sometimes mm-hmm. the biggest can be different from the best. Yeah, biggest was Jay Prince so, or either Megan. No, to him, to him. Okay. I want to know to him who okay. is the biggest well, you and then who is the best <laughs> interview you've ever had. So two answers. I'm going to say the biggest interview is Megan Thee Stallion. Okay. Because just the way the Bing. interview flowed. And that was the that was the genesis of her career, right? To mm-hmm. me, that that's still the biggest, right? Yeah. But I think one of my oh man favorites. I got so many. I think Sean Cotton was my favorite because he so does exactly what I do, and he gave me so many gems in the interview. You got that nigga number? And yeah, sure do. Get, yeah, we gonna call that nigga. I'm gonna call that nigga. We, we gonna call that nigga today. If he pick up. If he don't oh. pick up, we gonna leave that nigga a text. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm real aggressive over here at Boss Talk. That's why right. bosses come to talk. That's why you here right. with the belt. You Hell, you the to. champ. That's how he got um, Jay Prince. You got to be. A, you got to speak up. Right. You got to be a gunslinger. I'm yeah. a gunslinger exactly. in exactly. everything I do. You let that right. cat know today that Boss Talk 101 is officially invited him on Boss Talk, y'all. It's going down. But, and I know the plug to him, so... It's all good, hey, see? We got it both ways. You know what I'm we got it both ways. We gonna I want to get him on I here. would love to get him on here because I've yeah. interviewed some people that he's interviewed. Me and Charleston White, um, different people that done came through, Mike Jones. So it'd okay. be good to chop it up with him. Right, right. How right. did you come up with the name Taco, um, Takeover TV? Takeover TV? Now, he told that story a little right. bit. I think you missed it. That song? I'm that sorry. song. Yeah, it's okay. No, it's okay. It's okay. You missed it. It's okay. Give it. Well, remix. Well, well, remix our, it. Our listeners might have missed it, too. So let's uh, okay. go ahead and bring it back. Oh, really? <laughs> we going to go back, right? <laughs> but no, I, like I said, I was listening to the um, satellite radio. They just playing the original song and then the rap version, right? And so, like I said, The Doors 5 to 1 was playing. That's the name of the rock song. And Jay Z, the takeover is oh, the yeah, rap yeah, song. Yeah, I heard that part. No. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how it came about. Like I said, I'm an aggressive person. I like aggressiveness. I don't like passive stuff. So the name fit. I like the beat. It was a ready made thing. We, we good to go. Mm-hmm. I love the name. You say no army over. Over 20 years? Yes, sir. Air wow. Force. Wow. In the Ar- Air, Air Force. Force. Air Force. Yes, sir. Why do I think the Army? Air Force. I, probably because of this right here. Take over TV. Take over Army. Oh, what, I mean, what because it wouldn't sound right if it said Take over TV Air Force. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It, <laughs> it just wouldn't sound you right. Have, you you could have said um, Take over TV AF. Nah, that was everybody. What is AF? You know what I'm saying? I ain't got time to answer all the questions. You the sharp brother. You know the sharp ones go to the Air Force. I know about it. So why did you leave though? No, he he retired. I know, but everybody keep everybody I know keep on re-enlisting and re-enlisting and re-enlisting. I was at the end. Once you hit twenty, 
you get a paycheck for the rest of your life. That's all I need. Oh, yep. Okay. Yep. I mean, you can keep going, but uh, no, I got other things. Some to people do, do right? keep going, don't they? Some people young. do keep going. You're pretty young, so you enlisted when you were 18. I was 18 years old. Yeah. So, I so. once I hit 20 and I got what I needed, Uncle Sam got 20 years of what he needed. Now it's time <laughs> for me to get what I need. Okay. Man, we appreciate your service, though, man, because you hey, went man. through some times. You you seen action? Ooh. Yeah. See what I mean? I can I know what From you Iraq to Afghanistan yeah. convoy. Man, we appreciate so your time. Fly, so if we needed a, a pilot, you can you can hold pilot. up now. That's <laughs> that's that, that, wasn't his, that wasn't his place, I don't think. No, nah, that, that's what everybody thinks. You never force you can fly. No, I'm not a pilot. <laughs> I don't like I don't even like flying, so <laughs> nah, hell no. <laughs> so, so what was your specialty? He can't tell you that. He had to kill you. Sure. <laughs> I give you overview. I tell you the last job I did, I did mortuary, right? So I was dealing with the dead soldiers. Wow. And I did that on deployment too. Wow. So you had to um ice the body, bag tag, get them in the um the transfer case and you get them shipped. So and some of these people I had to process, some of these people I knew. Wow. So that that's a whole nother mental aspect that yeah. you gotta tap into. PSD. Okay, I got a question. Here we go. Because she have Cause a thing for this, okay, too. Okay, because um, cause I wanted to I wanted to do another segment with um, f- about mental health with mm-hmm. mainly um, military. Because mm-hmm. I saw something one day, and I never thought of it in that aspect. When the pandemic hit, you know, you couldn't go outside and so forth. But people with PSD, is it PSP? Um, PTSD. Oh, PTSD. PTSD. That's what it is. Right. PTSD. PTSD. Um, psychologists or psych- um, psychiatrists would tell them they have to interact with people because that's the best way for them to get over what they're doing. And with the pandemic, you cannot interact with people like you want to because of the pandemic, of course. Uh-huh. So they went into, you know, reverted whenever they had to. Uh, they went reverted. They reverted into themselves because they was going through that situation where they couldn't interact with other people okay so the main thing was getting out here talking to people that's the only way they can overcome so they had i remember a lady said every time they had to go to the grocery store they had a a panic attack because they wonder if that was the day they were going to contract covid and die compared to when you were overseas and you had to go out in the field you're like okay is this the day that i'm gonna die Right. So, and I never thought of it in that way where COVID was concerned comparing to when you're in the military. You uh-huh. know what I mean? Right. So, I wanted to get someone on here to talk about that situation and how it affected them mentally. I was ready and made for the COVID situation. Because when you deploy, you get put in this area where you can't leave. The people that's here are the only people you're going to know for six months, a year at a time. You're not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. The stuff you have there, that's what you're going to have, right? Mm-hmm. So when COVID hit and you locked down, I'm like, this is easy. This is easy work for me. I've been locked down with just this amount of people and, and can't maneuver, you know, like you want to. And the military, get it trains you to adapt to any situation pretty much. But um, so, were you suffered with PTSD? I, yeah, I got diagnosed, not with the most severe case, but I got, I got um, diagnosed with adjustment disorder. That's another check. You know. Right, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I got adjust, with adjustment disorder. Hell yeah, you got, you got, you got know, diagnosed. What? I didn't know how severe. <laughs> I didn't know how severe these people who were talking about this case, how severe they were with that PTSD, now, why, it, you know, why they felt that way. Some people are real severe with it. Mine wasn't as bad. But I'm a natural introvert anyway, so yeah. it, it didn't bother me. It's crazy because I'm an interviewer, right? Yeah. Mm. And... And I'm an introvert. That's so crazy. That's like an oxymoron. Yeah, you know? it is. You know it is. Right, right, very right. much so, so. When the pandemic hit, I was cool. What what it made me do is tap in to other talents that I didn't know I really had. I'm, I'm locked in this place. I can't go anywhere. I start getting on Photoshop, trying new projects, pull up YouTube. Here, how to make this. I, you know, go step by step, how to make flyers. I go step by step. So I was getting my game up, getting my social media game up learning how to do posts, create certain posts and doing all that. I didn't look at it as a bad thing. Mm-hmm. If there's going to be a bad situation, I'm going to try to make the best out of best it. Best out of it. That's mm-hmm. exactly. You know, mm-hmm. that, that's what a soldier Are you married do. or have any kids? Yes. Married, got two daughters. Okay. Wow. That's awesome. Wow. That's, that's something. Awesome. Right. So even when it snowed down there and iced over, it wasn't no water. So what we going to do, we're going to chop this ice. 
we gonna get this propane tank. We gonna boil this water, <laughs> this ice, and we gonna have water. I saw yeah. people on TV you know, doing that. I we gonna designate on bathrooms, one for one, one for number two. We, you know, we gonna fill these toilets up. I mean, these bathtubs up with much water as we can. It, oh, I was ready. You know, know how to ready. survive, survive mode, survival right, right. mode. The survival skills kicked in. So while they was on Facebook whining and crying, baby, we kicking up. We good over here. Already, man. <laughs> so, um, do you think that um, who would you who would you like to who, who what interview do have you not landed that you'd like to land? Oh, uh, out of anybody? anybody? Mm -hmm. Hell, you went and got Jay Prince. Mm -hmm. Anytime a nigga go get Jay Prince and then he end up over at Little Flip House, nigga, I want to know who you <laughs> want to interview next. You know, I want Boss Hog. I want Slim Thugger. Do you? Yeah, man. You want Slim Thugger? That, you you that, ain't that, reach out to him? That, that's my that guy. That's doable. They ain't you that, that's Jay guy. Prince. It's just funny how stuff falls. It's stuff falls what, different. Once you hit Jay Prince, you be like, oh, well, I should be able to get anybody. It ain't like it, that. It just don't work that it way. It don't work that way. It don't work that and, way. And I agree. You don't know who you're going to like. Like, I'm getting certain people, and it's like, damn. You no, know, like, I, I, I got a guy flying in from South Car well, North Carolina next mm -hmm. weekend. He's coming all the way to, to be on Boss Talk. It, it's crazy. You don't know. People see me. I don't know what it is about this platform. They in my DM. Like, I ain't never I ain't never hey. been attacked in the DM like these women been being attacked. But I feel them now. I see hey, what's it, going it, on. These niggas sliding in my DMs like this. It's only going to get worse, man. You I'm, think, oh, I'm yeah. telling you. It's only going to get worse. They sliding in. They want to get worse. down. And I'm like, man, you know, when I first did it, this was for us to be able to reach people to help people. Right. But now it's like people reaching out to me like we want to. We want to rock, which we see what you're doing. We love what's going on with the show, and we want to be on Boss Talk. And it's like, okay, well, and then it have to fit. I mean, my, the people that are working on my team, we have to say, okay, this is something that fit what we're doing. It got to be something that's going to help somebody. That's our first and ultimate goal. Like a person like you, when, yeah. when you said you was in the military, we looked at what you do, and it was like you already interviewed all these people. We felt like it'd be something for other bloggers. Bloggers, that was the same thing with Trill Talk, No Pill Talk. Mm -hmm. Ways to help other people to understand, you know, what th this, this could be someone's aspiration to do this. And, and then, you could be their inspiration. And then y'all show, it looks good. Yeah, so yeah. When, when the show looks good, oh, yeah. people going to want to hop on it. They want to get on they, there. They want to get on there. It's like, nice. yeah, yeah, it's yeah. nice. But thank you, man. We try. Nice. You know, we've been, we've been pushing, man. We're trying to make sure that everybody can feel comfortable coming on here that got something that they want to present to the world, bro. And that's what it's all about. This is dope. I'm really enjoying <laughs> this. I, I, I like this. <laughs> you said that everybody start normally um, is going to get worse. Mm -hmm. But what are your criteria? Like, who do you turn back compared to who do you say, okay, fine? First, you got to have something going. Right. You got to have something going. You got to have some momentum. You got to have somewhat of a following. And then it depends how you uh, approach me, too. You know, if you, because um, I get these inboxes like, Oh, they in your DM? Say, nigga, I want to interview. <laughs> no. Say, nigga, I want to interview. Oh, it's, it's, it's coming. Not, it's coming. Are it's you coming. serious? Say, you nigga. Serious? Say, nigga, I want to interview. I'm a, they got, hey, they going to shout out to my own bar. You shout out to my own bar, Quan. I can send him. He got an answer for him. Don't even trip. I got a nigga that'll answer him. I got something about I, it for I, that. I, I be having an answer, too. Uh, what do you say? I don't say nothing. You see, I perfect this thing while... Use my finger, swipe it this you way, keep going. and hit the red button. I'm probably gonna do the same Delete. thing. I, I'm yeah. out of there. Mm -hmm. You gotta have I'm some. There, right? You gotta have some respect in, in, when you do anything. So right. if these guys don't have no respect, why? How would they expect you to respond to that? I, I, I'm like, dude, you're trying to get something from me. Mm -hmm. When I ask these people, so I want to interview, nigga. <laughs> I'm interview, nigga. What, who the hell you think he's talking to, bro? You gotta come respectfully. Have anybody ever approached you? Yeah. Approach you like that? Face to face? No, no, no. See, they don't do it face to face, huh? right? They don't do it to face to face, but they would get on that Instagram and get on their Facebook and they say, Nick, where you going to put me on there? Never. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> then what you think this is, man? Wow. When you going to put me on, nigga? I want to be no, on. You're not going to be on. Never. Not like that. That's like, crazy. Man. So Shreveport, music scene. Yeah. What's up with it? I got my boy, uh, what is his name? Juice. Mm -hmm. DJ Juice, Juice, he coming on tomorrow from Tyler. Right. What's up with the music? You from Longview. Yeah. What's up down there? We got shout out to Smitty. Shout out to Smoothie Poppy. Oh, you know what I'm Smitty. talking about? It's going down, nigga. Yeah, man. It, the thing down there in that region, from Shreveport to East Texas, there's just not enough internet presence. That's the deal. 
they ain't, they not working hard enough. I, no, that's what you just said. The thing is, like, you said they ain't working hard enough. No, that's not it. That, that, yeah, that, well, that's they don't have no internet. Pre- they got phones. Everybody got cell phones now. Yeah. They so do. what's the problem? They don't have that one. Like Dallas has Dallas Global, Real Life Street Stars, Say Cheese. They have these big platforms to get everybody noticed, right? We working on it down that way, but we don't have that one big hub to have that internet press to get their music out there. Okay. To the other region. They working, but we working too to try to build it up. But what the artists have to realize, you got to help us build these platforms up. The more eyes is on it, the more eyes is going to see you. Mm -hmm. You just don't want other East Texas people seeing you. You want everybody to see you. You want Houston to see you, Dallas to see you, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Atlanta, Jackson, Atlanta, everybody, right? So, A, you got to be putting out content so people can see you. Mm-hmm. B, if you artist not going down your Instagram, I'm going to let down six or seven roles, ain't seen no music, then ain't nobody going to take you serious. You're supposed to be an artist, right? All right. Let's see some work. If I'm a blogger, I'm, I'm looking for content. So if you got content, I got something to post. But if you just got a picture of you eating chicken and holding money and stuff, then I ain't got shit to post. I got to move it around. <laughs> so I, 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 who's the hottest artist in, in, down in Shreveport right now? Oh. Who's uh, the who's but, the hottest artist in the Arklatex? Yeah, I hit you right then. We yeah, the, go on the say what? it. Oh, he know Arklatex. he know what I'm talking well, about. You, you gotta, I'm from you East gotta Texas. Explain to people Arkansas, who Texas, don't. and Louisiana. Oh, okay, okay. I'm gonna, say, I'm gonna tell you right now. In Shreveport, I'm gonna say Lil Band because he even got a blue chick. Lil so. Band. Yeah, I gotta look that cat up. Shout out, little baby. He's seventeen and young boy. He, he got he, he got some momentum 17. going. Right. Seventeen, That's young. he might be seventeen, no older than eighteen. He got some momentum wow. going, right? Little baby. But Lil if Bane. I had to say like the area in East Texas, that boy Smoothie. Ah! Oh, <laughs> I know it. That nigga, that nigga Smoothie. Oh my that god, nigga, nigga, that nigga Smoothie hard, ain't he? Go on, let's see it. Roll, so you say a Smoothie the hardest one in Arkansas, Texas, nigga? Go on, see it. He, he's the hot man right now. He's the man with the stick. I think so too. And, I and think people, so too. He might. Hey, Texas takeover. You and, you talk. Hey, you talking about the takeover TV? And, uh, have you got a chance to interview him? Yeah, I interviewed him last year. Already, real cool dude. And you can see his momentum he was building, on here. right? Yeah, you can see his momentum. But now he, now, that, he, that, that, he that, that, hey man, that muddy waters went hard. And it's gonna be some people mad at me. For hey, saying you that said too. it, nigga. You said it. Yeah, you gave but, up the. Uh, you gave the, you gave him the belt. But, but you let, gave him the crown. You know, let, let's quit lying to people. If he's the hottest man right now. He the hottest man. If you think you are work, damn it, you gotta work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, hey, work. hey, man, that nigga, hey, that nigga's serious about the way he delivering them cadences, man. I ain't hearing nobody that's getting down like Smoothie Poppy mm-hmm. right now. He got his Smoothie, own style. Hey, hey, and 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 the, and, the, and the social media streams have spoken. Mm-hmm. That's what you gotta look at. I love the way the internet tell you. You can say what you want to say. But the numbers ain't lying. You see how many videos he how he keep that nigga dropping every time. That, that's how you get noticed. And that's then he called me and said, "E hey, man, um, um, send me something, man. I'm for to post some or, or or like interviews like this one. He gon' oh he gonna love this. You you done you done gave him the crown today on my show. <laughs> oh he gonna put it out there. So whoever you were trying to tell that they were good <laughs> or better." You just gave it up, man. Hey, hey, shout out to Smoothie, man. You know I shout said it when you were here, nigga. You know I ain't hiding back, nigga. I'm one of them niggas. I ain't gonna fold, nigga. I think you hot, and I'm gonna be honest with you. I can't wait to see. I want to. I want to see him go. You know what I mean? But like I said, it, it's a lot more than just the music to it when you mm-hmm. deal with this stuff. Right. It's a lot more to it. You gotta have. You gotta have a lot of things going, and communication is key. I have a good team. Got to have a good team, team, but but the way you are, you, the way you are, the team predicts that too. You know, so I get it. You got to have the image, the, the image, team. the team. You know, you got to know how to communicate. If you're not good at communicating, it's hard. Get one of them side chicks or somebody to write your emails <laughs> or stuff. <laughs> Whoever you need to get, he probably need to, to get you if you writing Jay Prince in the no, middle of the night and making not, niggas move to I'm it. I'm not <laughs> saying I'm not saying smooth <laughs> can't communicate, but I'm just saying no, no, no. You gotta have a team, any man. Any artist, any artist. But that's why I said team because if you can't do something, you need to have a person around you who can do that. Exactly, somebody that you trust. Because that's the main thing with teamwork is that you trust the person that know that they're going to represent you, your best interest. Uh, teamwork no make what. the dream oh, work. Right? True story. I had a um, I had a female hit me up. Hey, you ain't posting my artist. He going to be the biggest thing out. And once he gets big, we going to shit on y'all and all this. I'm like, who the hell is? What artist? What the hell are you talking about? 
and she said his name and all that stuff. I was like, well, hell, you just killed any chance right. you got with me working with him. He hit me up maybe two months later. He's like, hey, man, why you never posted my video? And I told him. I said, well, this chick right here just cussed me out for not posting you, and I was done with it. He's like, man, I, I didn't even know that she was repping me like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I told him. I said, cuz, you're going to have to fix that because if she's sending that to me, I ain't no telling who else she's been sending it to, and she's going she gonna to kill your career before you even start. That's the wrong so, team So team whoever person. you have repping for you, they right. need to be, they speak for you. Right. So if this lady's cussing me out, that's you cussing me out. Mm -hmm. And so this, this ain't going to work. So, you know, you got to be careful with that. Because she he gave her some go ahead to do that because she must be in his camp somehow to have the balls to mm -hmm. you know to go ahead and contact you to say something like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, team finding the right team member is essential. Very. The thing I say about this blogging and and getting out here and telling people who, you know what you think about them. Hey man, you know it's just your opinion, man. You guys can ride with us or collide with us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We just really just telling you what 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 we see, and hopefully we can do it in a way that's tasteful. But you know, as long as you got the right energy, we we don't mind working with anybody trying to help show shed light on their artistic ways. You know, and right. I know you feel the same way. Right, right. You know, but you gotta have you gotta know how to approach the situation, guys. You know, um, I love I love people. I love music. You love music as you wouldn't be doing this. Right, right. Love music. Love music. Love dealing with interacting with people and trying to make sure that exactly. people see what's going on. So what happened? How did you come up with the belt? What's up with the belt? What, you what, you what? Pastor, what's that boy, Pastor Troy? Is that him? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you steal Pastor, that from him? No, I've been, <laughs> I've been a wrestling I'm, fan. All I'm saying is, I mean, Pastor Troy got the belt. You got the belt. What's right, up? right. One, I've been a wrestling fan forever since my grandma had me watching with the Von Erics and Bruiser Brody. Okay, and all wait a minute. Right? No, wait, no, no, see, now that's where you messed up. Uh, 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 uh. That's where you messed up at. If you a fan of the Von Erics, name them: Kevin, Kerry, David, Chris, Mike, and Fritz, the father. Did you say Kevin? Yeah, I said and Kevin. Kerry, did you say Kerry? Kerry, yeah, Kevin, David, okay, Chris, okay, and Mike. Did. Okay, I'll let you ride. And okay, Fred, and what? And, Fritz and, is the and what was their signature move? Kerry Von there had. Let's see. No, Kevin had the iron. They had the iron claw. Oh, there it is. He's a real fan. And, <laughs> and, and <laughs> there it is. And wrestled, a fan. and wrestled at the Sportatorium in Dallas. Come really? on, man. Yeah. Uh, well, I give I give you insight on on Kevin. You might not know it, but Kevin had a, a half a foot. Half his foot was cut off. Oh, that was Kerry. Yeah, Kerry. Off the motorcycle accident. That's right. Oh, yeah. How you know about so all he that? He knows. I told he you. He said he's a fan. I'm a wrestling fan. I love wrestling. Have you ever wrestled? No. No. Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> we got a little we got a little kin folk to wrestle. No, Ken, no, no, Tempest. No, Tempest no. rap wrestle. No, one no. of our cousins. He said, hell no. <laughs> no, I can't do it. But you, you but know. you but you like the way that the belts and everything signify. I got another guy that's coming on the show that got uh a Pit Bull, Bully, Bully Pits. And uh -huh. he got a belt. And he does the belt thing. He they he got belts for, I guess they gave out Championship. belts. Championship. So when I first started um, the Takeover Podcast show, it was we monikered the people's champion, right? You name me what champion ain't got a belt. That's right. That's true. Floyd Mayweather had belts. Mike Tyson had belts. Muhammad Ali had belts. If you're a champion, you you got a belt. If you're in wrestling, you got a belt. The champ got the belt. So, it depends on what, what um, sport you're in. Yeah. But we talk about normal individual sports. You know me, I'm a wrestler. You know, runners, wrestling. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna runners. You. Win, nigga. Yeah. We got chains. Nigga. But they they had oh, no, they got medals. They got medals. Nigga, but we got chains, nigga. We rappers. Uh, so. <laughs> Let me go and hit that nigga one time, nigga. You ain't the only one. We in the big chain game. Hey, Shout out to my nigga Dre, yeah, man. Yeah. I'm in the big chain game. Uh, and I'm gonna be honest with you. When you get the belt, nigga, I got the chain, nigga. I'm a real live rapper, to be honest with you. Don't yeah. come over here and think you're gonna do me because you're not gonna do that. Hey, man. Do you, God? Do you? That's that old Eric B. Rocky <laughs> chain right there. Yeah, I told him. I, I got I got the chain. You know what I mean? So I, I I went with the chain effect. And it does light up just in case. Don't make me turn the lights on, nigga. Oh, it people, can go hard. People love belts. I learned this when I went to Slim Thugger's um, kickback, right? Yeah. Went in there. I'm like, this is the best billboard that you can ever have is a belt. Because people mm -hmm. are going to look at it. Okay, well, I took it to South by Southwest one year. I don't know how many times I got stopped for pictures. They want to take Let me a take picture. a picture with the belt. Wow. Let me take a picture with you. Do this. Do you kickbox? Do you do this? Do, 
But this is a walking billboard. Do you think wow. South by Southwest is gonna be uh, back back popping this time? Uh, it might take a couple of years. I don't. Yeah, it's gonna take a couple of years to get back. So to they ain't listening. Right. Greg Abbott says it's open back up. What you talking about? He down in Austin. No. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe next year, two years down the road, but. <laughs> People got to feel confident, right? Because right. if you've been to South by Southwest, which I know y'all probably have, you know when it gets at night, you you airtight. Mm -hmm. So that's how you pass it, being airtight. So you ain't going to see my ass down there for a Already. couple of years. I'll tell you that right now. Already. I'm fully vaccinated, but still. Yeah, nah. So what 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 um what do you think What do you think that, that, that we need to do to uh, make music uh, great again? As media platforms, blogs, and stuff, we got to quit posting the messy bullshit to make it great again, right? The the, the bad music, the, the the bullshit, man, you know? I know exactly what you're talking he, about. <laughs> I do. It, you know, he who controls... Says, you know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> he who controls images controls minds. So when you put the images out there, you're controlling the people's minds. When you put this garbage out here, you're controlling the people's minds. So I, I believe it's on the consumer because if I rap and say A, B, C, D, E, and I sell a million records, why should I change? I hear you. You know what I I'm saying? You. Consumer demand would make people change. If you sold your shirts $100 a shirt and nobody bought them, you're going to eventually bring them up down to 70 or 50 mm -hmm. So the consumers have to demand change mm -hmm. from the artists. But if you buy an A, B, C, D, and they go on triple platinum. They ain't going to change. It's working. But you as a consumer have a chance to change that. And until the consumer demands better, you're not getting better. But the newer generations are accepting. When the older generation like us is looking at like, no, nah, that's not that's not right. But if you talk about hip hop, it's a young generation game. That's right. right. So they control the narrative. That's they, right. If they want A, B, C, D, E. That's what it's going to be. That's what it's going to be. And yeah. I'm going to rock out to it, A, B, C, D, E. <laughs> and if it yeah. got a dope beat to it, I can, I can make it long work. As long as the money coming in, I'm rocking with it. As long as they're getting that money, I'm, and they're getting that money. Okay. So, you they, know, they, that's they, what the people are appealing to. That's why I love the way the internet flow, too, mm -hmm. because it tell you if something hot, it's going to tell you. You can't deny it. Ain't nothing you can do about it, but ride with it or collide with it. But so um, I want to know something. Go ahead. Yeah. What is the, the worst um, case you've ever came across? running an interview like tell me about something that happened that was like a big blooper or big oops or anything like that big blooper i'm trying to think worst case like like your boy i'm not gonna say it no more all three of y'all <laughs> <laughs> you know something like that you know when you know my boy Birdman came in and he shut it down you ain't heard breakfast club really going at him see the south feel right. a little bit let me tell you something i'm gonna say this before you go the south feel like a lot of times we we don't get the respect we need and when they seen Birdman do that they to them it's, it's a joke but he wasn't playing with them no. the same way we not playing you're not gonna talk listen man you gonna be respectful to us. We we don't care how much money you got, really, in the South. You gonna give us our. We demand respect, and that's what that's what that's about. When you keep talking, well, we the radio. It don't matter. At some point, look, man, have some respect. Uh, well, you don't respect yourself because you did it. You don't know me to be even saying I did what. Yeah. You don't know me. Yeah. So at the end of the day, have some respect. Unless you know me, or, or, or you speak on something that's truth. Don't just don't just drag my name through the mud like that. And I think I, I understood where he was coming from. You know what I mean? But everybody got their issues, bro. But to answer your question, there was one interview. I ain't going to say his name. Yeah, say it. No, I ain't, ain't going to say his name. I ain't going <laughs> to say it at this time. He ain't going to say where, it this time. Well, I wish I don't want that exclusive, man. He, he must have talked shit about everybody in the city. And I'm thinking like, you know we both live here, right? Oh, he talked <laughs> bad. From Bay Bay all the way down, like, he went through there. I'm like, man, somebody's going to get executed for this. And luckily, by the grace of God, the, the audio had went out like halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, hey, I can't put it out. <laughs> it ain't going to work. Because you, you, that's where you got to make a decision. It would have had, had tons of views because the word would have got around, right? Mm -hmm. But if you know anything about Shreveport, they don't play no games down there. I'm talking two or three people getting shot a day down there. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. You got to know the the bridges you about to burn on interviews like that. You get the views, you get the notoriety, but that that residual, that collateral damage 
Are you going to be able to overcome that? These people, this ain't like I'm doing it in Chicago and I get to go back to Shreveport. We talk about Shreveport. I live in Shreveport. And a lot of these people like the people that he was talking shit about. So you might not have said it, but it was on your platform. So you're going to take the brunt of the responsibility. They're going to talk shit about him because he said it. But it was on your platform. People are not going to care that you didn't agree. Yeah, because you didn't have disagree. to put it out or anything Listen, like that. Listen, man, you got to have some tough skin in this game. You know, you if I say something, I'm going to stand behind it. I ain't going to lie to you. I, I don't I mean, hopefully it don't be. Because people, if they don't like you, if they feel they can do something to you, they're going to do it anyway. Right. right. I mean, you got to be strong to get up on behind these cameras and, and have a conversation now, anyway. Depending on what they said. Now, if it was a true story, like, hey, um, Young Buck left me in California. Fuck now, that's a true story. He just get his story, side of the story. Right. I don't like this nigga. No, I don't like that. Now, 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 we could, we could, I can ride with that, right? Because Buck could come on there like this didn't happen this way. But if it's on some man, I don't like this nigga. I don't like, and it ain't no validation and no right. real substance behind it. Then I agree. This, I agree. This, this, this ain't this ain't gonna ride here. I agree. Well, I let you get your shit off. But once you start just getting personal, you just want to just throw shots and darts to, to get that proof. viral moment. You have to have then, proof. Nah, we ain't finna ride with that, not around here. Cause I got, I still got a family to protect, and you might not see me, but you might see my wife somewhere and might want to do something to her. You know, people right. be on this dumb crash dummy shit these days. So I got to think all the way around, not only for me, but my for girls your family. Too. Yeah, you for your girls. Yeah, I, I exactly. agree. I agree a hundred percent. I mean, the the thing I can say is, you cause cause you do have people that get on platforms, say whatever, and talk bad mm. about whatever situation, and that's really money in other people's po pockets when it become a thing about their artist. So you do have to be careful how you address different things that you talk about on the platform. But you also have to be, uh, you have to tell the truth when you're dealing with me. I ain't gonna lie to you. You know, you gotta yeah. you got it got to be something where. If you feel a certain way, and because I had some people to say some things, even here lately, I hear them like, damn, for real? Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah, that's the way it went down, like you said. And it'd be their truth, I guess, or they what they feel happened. Because, right. I, I mean, it's a lot of stuff that go on behind these microphones. You know that. Right. I mean, we had Charleston White on here. Ooh, so, man. hell, ain't no telling what <laughs> the hell. I ain't no telling who heard what he had to say. What I'm saying is you don't know. And, and and at the end of the day, you just pretty much letting a person tell their truth or their story. But I do know I like what he done with those kids. Yes. He, he he really in the community. I just went to a deal where I spoke to the juvenile children mm -hmm. behind Charleston White, where I was able to speak to them and they locked up and incarcerated, whatever, you know, and, and we was able to, this was just, was that yesterday? Yesterday. Yesterday. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm about real. Exactly. So, you know, uh, I'm going to do what the heck I feel for kids for sure. And if it's somewhere I see somebody doing something and they really speaking the truth. See, a lot of times when Charleston speaks, and I'm just going to speak on him briefly, he speak about certain things that happen with the children in rap. Mm -hmm. Is it true? Is it positive that they're doing to the children or negative? Ask yourself that in certain aspects. Well, they just making music. But it's influential. Very. So whereas, so when he says these things, is it something that's truth? If he's trying to save some children in stop six that might not have shoes and clothes to put on? And he's trying to influence them in a positive manner? You understand where I'm coming from? Right. So you have to stop and ask yourself, what side do you want to be on? Do you want to help the children? Or do you want to help influence them into a place where they can't make it? Well, that's a good question. That, that was deep. That, that's a real good question that you have to ask yourself. Ask yourself if you got any morals about yourself. If you got any morals about yourself right. and you're really trying to see a change in the children and you're trying to do something to help change the community and the masses of the people that you touch, what are you going to do? Are you going to become a part of the process or the problem? These are things that you got to ask yourself. These are just questions that you have to bring up when it comes down to dealing with what we're dealing with here. You're right. And so I love, like, I love, I love the music, but I, I love John Wayne movies too, or I love uh, Bonanza too. Mm -hmm. So you got to be able to look at all sides of this coin to know where this thing is falling. Is he rapping from the heart or is he rap? What is this? Because Ice Cube would talk about it like you showed me the other, uh, mm -hmm. this morning or yesterday, where this is, this is not real. I'm an actor. When I say this on a rap song, 
I'm just portraying something of a story. Not all of it is real. Some of it is real and some of it is so, fake. So it's just you got to be able to decipher what's going on, man. You know what I mean? That, that's all. And we, we, this ain't an easy thing to do. It's not. And I never would have thought about it this way till I started dealing with it like we've been dealing with it here on Boss Talk 101. You know, can I say something real quick? Go ahead. Go ahead. Like, y'all going to be a big deal before long. <laughs> Why do you say that? Because, A, you're in the prime location. You're up here in the Metroplex in Dallas for one. So everybody okay. has to come through Dallas at some point of another, right? Yeah, yeah. B, you got the credit, but you don't have uh, Charleston White on here. Yeah. You don't yeah. have Mike Jones on here. Yeah, we got more people coming. And more people. Star Power drives a platform to that next level. We just had Sir Charles Jones on you here know the other what I'm night. Saying? Yeah. People, whether you deny it or not, Star Power carries those platforms to the next level. True. Yeah, yeah. True. And with y'all being at the right place, right time, right people, great hosts, good look, it's only a matter of time. Really, I, we'll, it, pre, we'll it, receive. It, we take yeah, it. We'll it's take it's it. only a matter of time. You could just—I have the ability just to see different things and see what stuff is trending. Like Big D, yeah. Big Big D just don't. He got interviews that got five hundred thousand, six hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going good. We don't have these conversations yeah. like, like this. And he went. He so you there. you could see it. I can see it. Wow. Well, let me it. ask you a question though. Yes, you know, Star Power. You said drive it, but then on the other flip because. I, like I told you earlier, we don't only have rappers on here, but we do mental health. Mental we do health a lot of different and stuff. certain topics that yeah, are true. And influential we real estate to here today's today. society. Yeah. How does that part well, drive a platform comparing to? So what, what I kind of mean, I should have probably cleared up a little bit. The stars are going to bring in the subscribers and the viewers, right? And once they subscribe to that channel you, and you come in with all these fire interviews, the next one that drops, they know you're known for fire interviews. You got the subscribers. It's going to hit the alerts on, on the on the subscribers, That's right? That's correct. And you, you might not get as many views of Miller right. Hill, but you're going to still get the views because now you got the people. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's some people that Vlad interviews. I don't know who the hell they are, but, <laughs> but, but he's known for great interviews. So I watch them. They end up being good interviews. You just you you you, yeah. you got to bring them in that way. Yeah, but we, those stars brings in your initial subscribers. They know you like okay, this is a platform that's known for having some big people, and then people will be willing to give the little people that you interview a chance because they know you got the credibility. Yeah, it's kind of like mm -hmm. like we had the juvenile detention lady on here uh, 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 a week or so ago, and and hers is doing good now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's right. like more people looking at her because of the platform, and then we steadily growing in subscribers. They just been going. But it's so crazy though. that you have to bring the stars to be able to get the subscribers that, to be able to to push yeah. out information because we started our platform mainly to inform, educate right. our listeners on different topics. You know what I mean? So, but you have to bring them to be able to get them to come and be I interested. mean, that's how I go. Let, let's, let's really be honest about it. Now, if you interviewed um, three guys down the street, another guy around the corner, two guys over there, like, who, who's going to really watch? <laughs> Nobody. Right? Who's going to really Even watch? if they had great they, topics. They could be great people, but who's going to really watch? Like, I don't know them. Yeah. Right. I don't yeah. know them, right. and I don't know them. And so, I mean, that's just the way it works. Right. right. It, even sometimes I see a platform, I'm like, I don't know who the hell this. is. I'm not really interested, <laughs> but, but like I said, the stars and the bigger people right. build the audience up. Yeah. Now you can start that's gambling. What, that's what's happening. Now you can I start gambling them. and getting some of these smaller people because now you got your what we call your core audience that's right. going to watch you no matter what. No matter what. And then, then the appearance, you know, like right. the, the way we're doing the, the the way we're putting it out to the masses. When right. they see it, it's a good look. And, and I, like I said, it's a good look. And people like to be on good looking stuff. Yeah, yeah. So let me let, let me ask you this. So this is something that I do. Uh, okay. Um, the um, top three artists. <laughs> You've seen this before. Mm -hmm. Top three artists of all time, and everybody. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All time yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the top three artists of all times, man. You gotta give us what you think, man. We love and value your opinion, man. Top three artists of all time, gotta, dead or alive. And I gotta put them in order too, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whichever way you want to do it. Number one. I gotta go Pac. I gotta Tupac go. Shakur. He I, has that's uh, that's something that we've heard before. I gotta Tupac go Tupac Shakur because Shakur his range, he could go from making a party album from I Get Around to Brenda's Got a Baby to Dear Mama to um, I ain't mad at you. Arts of War. 
He he could he could hit every aspect, and he could just captivate any genre, right? Okay. People love Pac. He was iconic before the age of twenty five. That's right. Iconic. Who you got in number two? Oh, this is hard. This is really hard. It's good. You know, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna get to my boy Scarface. Ooh, that's the first one. Man, I can't you believe it. You just made him yeah, happy. Man. You just made yeah, him happy. Yeah, man. Right he here. in the building now. Scarface, and I don't Fa blame you. That's a Brad Jordan. Face is the best storyteller to ever grace a microphone to me. I mean, Scarface gonna give it to you real. Scarface got them stories where you so intrigued in the story, you forget you listening to a rap <laughs> song. You know what I'm saying? He takes you to places that you've been before that you're familiar with. He Man. ain't about the club. He ain't about the party. We, Brad we Jordan. listen to Scarface, you know That's you listen to some real. Brad, yeah, Brad Jordan. Jordan. Brad Jordan. Better understand that, man. Shout How out to Scarface, man. How did he come up with the name Scarface? Because that, that's what they did. Or that's Jay Prince now, man. Yeah. Yeah, Jay Prince put that group together, man. Shout out to Jay Prince, man. God down in the South. You niggas know we here now. Yeah. Stand up. So, uh, uh, number, three. number three. My boy, DMX. DMX have been that's really a, been no. on this platform. That's the third, third time. Third time we've heard DMX, DMX. man. DMX must be. I, but I, let me tell you. But I'm let me tell you. Because Jay Z come up, but DMX right there with him. You know they battled no, one no, time. But, but let me tell you, head and head, who is our top people? It's Michael Jackson and uh, Tupac. Tupac. And those are the two top. Those are the two top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Oh, see, I'm just doing rappers. If we talk about no, all I said, of no, oh, no, I didn't tell you all genres. All yeah. genres. I normally throw that in there. It's all genres. So, are you switching up your top three? Because I said all genres. <laughs> no, I'm gonna keep. It. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! That's my boy right there. He's nah, nah. No, no, Brad no. Jordan. Why'd you I, I, throw some Brad Bob Marley in there? I, I've already, I've already Shout out that. Scarface. I've already spoke on it now. Brad Jordan, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Like I said, man, we we love getting the people on here who, especially the ones that you the second one to come on the blog, like Trill Talk, No Peel Talk. I'm trying, like I said, I'm I'm gonna hook that up with Sean Cotton. I want to rock with him. Um, but man, I just thank God for you, man. Keep doing your thing down in Shreveport. And if it's anybody that you can send my way or I can send your way, let's do it. I, I see you linked up with my boy Black earlier. Uh, you got to, you got to take opportunities. Yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. Because right? those guys they coming with it. We had to see how God makes things work. I took him to the location, but we had a chance to chop it up That's, on the way ain't there. Ain't that somebody didn't think fact. about that? That's something else. So we got a chance to network. And That's it. All this he know stuff. everybody. That's my main plug. That's it, one of my like, main plugs. Like I said before, any situation you come into, you need to make the best out of it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just needed a ride, but at the same time. Y'all, like, you was able to talk with me. He like, a good brother, I'm man. Like, he's a manager. So oh, he's a good manager. So I got to get... My stuff on. And he gonna link you to there. other people. And that's how you do exactly. it. Exactly. People miss that part. Like, dude, interact. And if they say no, it's no. But I, like I say, I'm a gunslinger. I'm like Brett Favre. I'm throwing a touchdown or a pick. Oh, even okay. I'm letting this ball go. But even when it, even when our listeners talk, listen to what you're saying, and every time when are you saying that, okay, I got to this person because of this person telling me about this person and this person telling me about, you know what I mean? So that's right. networking. right. I made a good impact on you, so you sent me to somebody else. Right. So that's really how you should do in life. Not only on here, but if you want to be somebody in life, you should be able to always network. Just like our daughter said about college. She's like, I'm not going to college because of an education. I'm going to network. That's powerful there. Yeah. Most <laughs> people go for education. Because she's a straight-A student anyway. She's going to get her education. <laughs> exactly. But, but in her frame of mind, it's like, okay, I'm going to pick my college. depends on I'm looking at how much money they make. I'm looking at who goes to the college. So she's not looking at also, okay, what I can get educational-wise from this. I'm looking at, okay. What can I link with? Who can I link with? Yes. Influential people who are there. So it's just yeah. taking advantage of the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you never know who you meet. You might get somebody that's really heavy in the investing. Like I invest. You know, if you ain't making money while you sleep, you're going to work till you die. That's exactly. it. Jeff, thank exactly. you so much, man, for coming on the show, man. Anytime you're back in the Dallas area and you hit me up, come by here, man. You're always welcome, man. I got a thing for East Texas. You know, I'm from East Texas. 
appreciate that. So, I'm gonna have to get y'all on Takeover TV. We yeah, got, when we, we gonna got, do we it? To run this back. You didn't bring. You ain't bring the stuff. <laughs> hey, because I got some other stuff. See I what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I did trail talking on pills. I'm saying, well, what a stuff. What yeah, a camera. Yeah, and he was supposed to do it here too. And I'll he come down do there it. too. You know, I'm down there. I got we got a home down there and stuff. So yeah, I'll come yeah. down there and I'll rock with you whenever you wherever whatever you want to do. Shoot, man, y'all come on. Yeah, anytime. Because uh, you know we stayed over there at Cherokee uh, Lake here uh, Not recent. Too long ago. Yeah. yeah, we play. We don't mess around. I got partners yeah. down there for real, for real. Yeah. So I'm coming home. Don't trip. All you got to do is tell me, hey, let's do it, and it's on. It is. Hey, man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Hey, man, thanks for the invite. Man, I love being here. I How can it. they get a hold of you? Just, just say it one more time before we get off air. Oh, Instagram, TakeOverTV underscore ENT. On Facebook, TakeOverTV. The YouTube channel is TakeOverTV ENT. And the email is the.takeover903 at gmail.com. Man, hey, man, that's another great episode of Boss Talk 101. And we out. Uh.